Hey guys, welcome back to the big board. So, uh, those of you that don't hang out on Facebook or G Plus or whatever may not have seen any of the comments I've made recently. Uh, and I also have also made a video that I haven't posted yet. Uh, where I was talking about the price of components and the price of some games that I felt was uh, unreasonable for the game purchaser. And, uh, and I've also been having conversation not I guess basically offline, but with uh, friends in the Austin community about the price of some of the games. And, and the comment came up about this title, uh, Hold Fast. And uh, this is a $64.99 game retail, and I believe that the uh, Kickstarter was about the same price as well. It's been seen online uh, on sale for uh, $39. It was uh, on sale at Walmart, of all places. For thirty four dollars, and and I guess that that and I've seen this played. I've sat down and watched uh, watched the game being played. Uh, I've read the rules and I've played a little bit on Vassal, but haven't physically played the game and touched all the bits with my hands. And so uh, my takeaway was that this felt like a very expensive game relative to uh, other sixty four dollar block games that I've purchased, and. Obviously, a lot of that has to do with volume, and I understand that. It also has to do with where you make things. And as a manufacturer, that's your choice to choose where you wish to make things. You want to make things in America, and they're more expensive? I understand that. And some folks want to get in on that and support it. That's great. But my take on it was, here's a game that plays fast and plays well, and it's nice, light war gaming. It doesn't, you know, it's not going to grab you historically and go, this is the definitive, you know, East Front game, block game, for that matter. Um, but it is a good introductory game. And I, I just feel like Worthington missed an opportunity that given uh, this game costs somewhere, if you were making it in China, we were making it in Europe, it would cost between 5 and $10 to make, and probably more like 5 or 6 than 10 or 12 and I've confirmed that with a couple of different people, uh, that that would be about the price. Now, how much it would cost to, cost to be made in the United States, I don't know. You know. Hell, maybe it's four times as much. So maybe 64 99 is a, a very reasonable price. So <clears throat> I guess uh, some customer ratted me out to Worthington Games and said, hey, you know, Captain Blowhard in the corner over there is uh, bitching about your game and about the price, and you should tell him to go pounds and or whatever well uh grant and mike are great guys and they didn't do that they sent me a very nice note and a copy of the game and said hey why don't you play it before you piss and moan about it and it costs us a lot of money to make the game and we don't make a lot of volume and we're a little company got it i'm on it um so that's a great way to shut me up because that is a very generous uh, it's an expensive game to make and I appreciate you sending it to me and I have asked uh, I am no I have not asked but I'm going to ask them to uh, give me their PayPal address so that I can uh, send them some money for the game because I'm not going to take a free game from them uh, because that should not uh, impact you know my my desire to talk about this topic about the cost of games the topic actually came up when we we're talking about adam starkweather's uh title the day of days or whatever it's called you know 16 counter sheets and all the rest of it uh it's a crazy amount of counters and and maps and it's going to be a big box format it's 198 dollars for the for the pre-buy for the p500 well that's 50 percent more than uh uh, where Eagles Dare, and I think higher again uh, than uh, The Devil's Cauldron. And I understand the prices have gone up and the big games are expensive to make, but I felt like that was a disservice to the gaming community as well. And here's what I think about Holdfast. If, if, if there was an opportunity to make this game and sell it and make money in the Kickstarter stage for 35 or $40 and get an extra 100 or 200 orders because the price was right, wouldn't that be a good thing to expand the community of, uh, of gamers and as a great introductory game, more people would buy it? I certainly would have bought a copy. I would have bought a copy to, to play with my kids and uh, try and get them excited about wargaming since I seem to be failing miserably at that. 
but but you know it, it was sixty four dollars, and I passed on it, uh, and I'll and I'm passing on the Korean one as well because it's too it's too expensive for what you get. So I'm gonna open up the box. I know someone's already done a uh, box opening, and I, um, you know it's got this sleevey thing, and that's fine, and it's got the turn track on the back of the box, which is a little unusual, and then it's got this generic box, which is. Uh, the same for all of their games, which is very smart, right? Uh, it is a uh, a softer format box that you're, you know, it's, it, it feels a little delicate, but it's fine. Uh, and then the blocks. And there are 60 blocks, not 30 blocks, I was told. And they are your regular sized blocks. I don't know what size they are. Half inch or an inch or whatever. They are. And then you have uh, your four dices. Four dice. You have uh, a uh, setup chart. Oh, are these labels? No, nope. setup chart. Is that, are they labels? They might be the stickers. Yeah, I think they're the stickers. And uh, you have a cardstock map as opposed to a uh, paper map. Uh, I think in my private thread uh, with the Austin folks, we talked about it being a cardstock map, not a uh, paper map, and I mistakenly reiterated that on Facebook. Uh, and this is a, you know, it's very similar to the Columbia Games maps for sure. It's, uh, if we could turn that the right way, that would be nice. You know, it's a functional map, does its thing, right? There's nothing too uh, uh, fancy about it, and there's also nothing wrong with it either. Uh, as you can see, the, the, the hexes are quite large. It covers all the, the main bases from uh, Bucharest over here and Warsaw on the top left-hand side up to just the, the edge of Moscow. And geographically, at a quick glance here, you know, pretty accurately positioned in terms of the woods and bits and pieces like that that matter, right? Uh, so... Um, that's the game uh, for $64. And the thing to keep in mind, and these are the stickers actually. Uh, yes, these are the stickers. Uh, the thing to keep in mind, and I like the nice color play chart too. That's, that's cool. The thing to keep in mind with a game like this, or any game that you, buy, that you pay for, is not just the cost and the cost of production and whether or not you, know, you feel like you're getting a good deal. It's the play value that you get out of the game. I fully appreciate that, and uh, I will be setting this up, and I'll play with my uh, my boys, and hopefully we'll uh, get a, a game, uh, a war gamer out of them, and maybe that would justify the sixty four dollar price. But in the meantime, I think there's uh, opportunities for us as buyers of games, and as uh, as uh, publishers and designers to think hard about how we want to position our games and who we're trying to sell to, and how much we're prepared to pay. And uh, I have these conversations all the time with folks about secondhand games that I'm trying to acquire or dispose of. I sell a lot of my games because once I'm done with them, I'm done with them, and especially if they're not uh, appealing to me, they hit the, uh, the trade pile pretty quick. And, and I like things to move as opposed to languish. <laughs> and so I like to price things to get rid of them, and I also like to haggle to get the best price I can. So maybe that colors my my viewpoint of, uh, of the pricing of this particular game and the games like Adam Stark, where this title just felt wrong to me. I know that not everyone can produce a thousand copies of a game, but if you're raising between ten and sixteen thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars for a title, you can manufacture a thousand copies of this game. And in fact, it'll be interesting to see when this thing goes out of print, right? Uh, we ought to you know, make some assessment of uh, how long it was in print for. Uh, we'll give us an idea of how much was sold, right? Um, that's all I had to say. I want to say thank you for the game. I'm, I'm very appreciative. I will be sending uh, Worthington and, and the Wiley brothers uh, some money. And I will most certainly play it. And I will give you my impressions. Uh, <clears throat> like as I said, I've read the rules and played and goofed around with it on Vassal, but actually having a tactile experience with it uh, will probably uh, change my perception, no doubt. All right, thanks for the time.